welcome to another top 10. Yes, I am trying to barrel through these at the moment because I want to get to some other lists. Not to mention that game releases have been somewhat dry lately. I mean, you're going to get, you've probably seen the occasional review out and you will get some, but yeah, there's just not a huge amount of releases in January to speak of. But maybe I'll do an anthology at some point of some older games I want to talk about. But, you know, for now, I think Top 10s has definitely given it a feature. And hopefully that's uh, pleasing to you, especially if, like me, you love Top 10 lists. This is one that, uh, yeah, I did originally say I wanted to do more weird lists. And this is not a weird list at all. This is a straight up best of a genre. However, I felt this one, Top 10 Worker Placement Games, deserved some honorable mention because, let's face it, when you think of certain genres, you try to think of your 10 best and it's like, there's only so many I can think of. And, you know, lately we are getting saturated with so many games and, you know, some genres are starting to get bloated, but none of them have been quite as bloated as worker placement. And worker placement games, there's so many worker placement games, it's unreal, even when they just use it a bit in the game, you know, it's still so much in the category. But the other thing with worker placement is that they tend to follow tropes. So, you know, you've got the whole, you must feed your people, or you go to a space and it blocks someone else and stuff like that. And it's, it's cool to see when those tropes get broken. But even if they don't, you know, which ones can stand out when you've got a mechanic that has been done to death? Which ones stand out from the crowd, in my opinion? And like I say, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of debate as to what people find as their favorite worker placement games, because let's face it, there's a lot of them to talk about. I've even had to change this list once, actually, because I I did some work on it. Then I played some other games and thought, oh yeah, you know what? These kind of deserve a bit of a shift as well. And it was hard to rank this. Really, really hard to rank these games. I mean, all of these games I love. These are great games, but there's so many worker placement games out there. So in terms of the criteria, I've had to think, right, <clears throat> does it use worker placement in a strong way? I don't want a game that just simply has you put in a dude out on one space, but the majority of the game is based on something else, you know, where it's like a small part of it. Plus, you need that tension that I can't go to that space because you've gone there. If you lose that, that has an effect, but then maybe there's other things that you can block people from doing, or maybe there's a like it does something else to make it warrant the worker placement title, because there's definitely one exception to that rule on this list. But like I say, I want these to stand out for me. Do they have strong themes? I think for the most part, they've got pretty strong themes. I mean, I do enjoy theme in my worker placements, but it doesn't have to be the case all the time, as we shall see. Like I say, there's a lot. It was hard to make this list. There's so many I could have thought of. There's probably a dozen you lot can think of on top of this lot. You know, it's a genre I really like. I really like worker placement games. So I wanted to do a top 10 on this one for a while. So, crack on. Firstly, apologies if you get some noise out of there. I mean, the microphone is pointing towards me, so it shouldn't pick up any outside noise, but I do have some random noisy neighbors with a random noisy kid. But yeah, they're playing outside, yeah, it's freezing cold, I really don't get that. But my number 10 is a game I don't own yet, because friends of mine own it and I play their copy, but I have kickstarted the new collector's version that will be coming uh, in the next couple of months, actually. Yeah, I'm looking quite forward to it. This is one of Mind Clash's games, and Mind Clash, oh my god, they do some amazing games. I don't think I've had a bad game from them yet, although I think they've only released three. But so far, like I say, they, they hit the mark in giving me a heavy, thematic feeling, involved and engaging game, whether it's worker placement or some other mechanic. But this one, I wanted to have one in my collection, but a friend of mine has had it and I've kind of stuck with it, but... No, now the Kickstarter happened, I thought, oh, I can get involved and I can have the game for myself because I want it in my collection. And that is Tricarion. Tricarion is a game where it's basically the prestige. And if you've not seen the prestige, go rent that film out or go download it or something because it's a really cool film, underrated. It's got, a, I think, Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman in it. I think they're the two actors. But, you know, it's a really cool movie about, like, competing magicians. And in this, you're doing the same thing. You're trying to get your, your tricks to be the most famous ones and perform on nights and have the most fame by the end of the game. You'll have different apprentices that have different traits and you'll send them out to get the spare parts and equipment for your tricks, to get money, to get you know more apprentices. And, and it's a really tense, 
cool worker placement game. It, in, in, you know, the spaces are super tight. You've only got so much uh, like money to spend on your salaries for your various apprentices, but you've also need like a certain like rating, power rating of an action to do more stuff. And it's tense. I mean, there's not many spots on the board, regardless of how many players you're playing with. And you want to go everywhere and you can't, so you've got to prioritize, oh, which one do I do? Which one do I do, I do next? And oh, it's so tense and it makes your head explode just trying to consider. But even though it's not quite feeling like you're putting on a magic show because of the fact that it's quite abstract in the way it is, for the rest of it, that whole prestige element of competing magicians and you trying to get in each other's way, you know, like, yeah, I don't care if you're a magician as well. My tricks are better. I'm going to be famous. You're not. And there's like, so like shady dealings you can do in the black market. There's some great tactical card play as well with these cards that you can pick up that make your actions slightly better. But yeah, as a mind class just hit it out of the park with their worker placement games. And this one is a solid one that I cannot wait to see this nice looking deluxe version in my collection with the expansion. It's a quality game. I know I don't own it, but like I say, it's a top 100 game for me probably. And, you know, maybe next year, I suppose. But it's, it's, it's just going up as I play it more. You know, I have to rely on a friend to play it at the moment. But once I get my own copy, that can change. So number 10 kicks off with a pretty heavy title, Tricarion. My number nine is a classic worker placement game. And I think the word on the grapevine is that this one is getting reprinted. Maybe with a different theme, I'm not sure. But I believe it's getting reprinted. I just don't know when. But this has been out of print for ages and I really want the expansion to this game and I can't have the expansion. It's out of print and I can't have it. It sucks. But, oh uh, well, the base game is still great. It's about a boring theme. I don't care much for the theme in this. It's based on an IP set of books. I don't care. I have no intention of reading the books. Whatever. But this is a game with a unique worker placement mechanic that has not been done in any other game. Why not? Why not? Seriously. Pillars of the earth. It is a classic game. I mean, how old is this? Uh, I gotta find it. Duh, 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 duh. Oh, 2007. Okay, it's not the oldest game in the world, but my god, this is such a cool game. And this mechanic where you draw the master builder workers out of a bag and you can place it on the board and go to a spot. But in doing so, if you're drawn out first, you've got to pay a lot of money to do so. And, but if you wait, then you've got to wait for other people to go to all the spots first. And it's like, oh, I can't get my spot anymore. But at least I didn't have to pay any money for it. So was it a good move or not? So you're kind of half thinking, I really want to go to that spot, but I also don't want to have to pay seven gold to send my guy out. Maybe we could just draw him out a little bit later. And yeah, there's a little bit of a luck factor to it, but it's, it's mitigated and you're prepared for it. But oh, it's, it's a cool mechanic and no other game has replicated this. Why? It worked for this game, it could work for others. But it's a solid worker placement game. I really adore this one and it makes me want to get it to the table very soon actually because it's simple, the graphic design is good, you know, it's easy to follow. It was one of the like sort of easy to follow worker placement games where you basically put your guys out and then resolve everything in a set order and it's just... Very clean, very streamlined, very crisp. And did I mention that Michael Menzel uh, did the board? I believe I used this photo on my uh, Portsmouth on board, um, you know, like meetup sessions, you know, for a while. This is one of the prettiest games I have seen. It has possibly the best board out there. It's just so gorgeous, so colorful, so wonderfully painted. You've got little Easter eggs all over the place. Of like, you know, you can see little guys farming and guys working in the mine shaft, a little cat there on a building. It's like so much detail. Michael Menzel deserves more praise and more work because he makes the best looking game boards without a doubt. But that aside, this is still a great worker placement game. I really want the expansion and I can't get hold of it. It's impossible. Nobody's selling it. And even when they are, they're selling it at stupidly expensive prices. But I do hear a reprint is coming. And if the reprint is coming, I strongly advise you to check it out as long as they don't completely change what, this, what made this one so cool. So number nine, well-deserved. Pillars of the Earth. Don't care about the books. My number eight is a fairly chaotic worker placement game. It's very aggressive as well. I mean, you are in each other's faces all the time. And again, we're going with a magic theme here, except this is more kind of 
Hogwarts meets anime style sort of magic, not the prestige. This one, you are really going after each other. I mean, you're blocking each other, you're attacking each other. It is a mean game, but thematically it's amazing and you've got lots of different options, such a good replay value as well. And it's a very unique take on this genre. Again, uniqueness is good. Argent, La Consortium, and this is a heavy box, so it's got the expansion in it as well. But this is a, like I say, Hogwarts meets anime. You are professors in this dean, uh, a school for magic, and the dean has stepped down or gone mysteriously disappeared, I can't remember, and the idea is, is that each of you wants to be the new head of the school. Problem is, there's only room for one spot, and you're all competing. You want supporters, you want you know various ideas and stuff to back you up. The problem is the consortium are hidden in terms of their motives. You don't know what it is they're looking for yet. There's a bunch of face down cards. And as you go through the game, you are zapping each other wizards off spots, you're collecting mana and gold and spells and leveling up spells and getting supporters and getting items and oh, buffs and potions. There is so much to do in this game, so much variety, it's unreal. But I love that take that you have to find out what the consortium is after. And you could just play the entire game and just hope that you're collecting the right stuff for the consortium, but it's amusing that it's, it's, it's really cool when you do certain actions. It allows you to flip a card over and it says, the player with the most mana gets a vote. Okay, so at some point I need to have the most mana, but you don't want everyone else to know that. So you put it back down, face down, and as long as nobody else looks at it, you start just stockpiling a little bit of mana here and there, you know, I'm just I'm just being a little bit frugal with it. And you, you don't want to give the game away that that's a thing you're going for, because if you do, then other people will twig. But it's really cool that you can sort of like have some knowledge that other people don't, and they've all got knowledge that you don't either. It's such a cool twist on this. And again, like I say, cool twists make a work replacement game for me. But it looks cool, it's bright and colorful, you know, the component quality is, hit and miss, but it's still really cool. The expansion ups it to an even better level with another school of magic and some tweaks to old rules that you know improve the game further. But don't play this game if you don't like aggressive games. Oh my God, I mean, I, I'm not usually a fan of aggressive games. Yeah, I still really like this one. I think a lot of it comes down to that high replay value and variety and the theme that it uses. But yeah, you are in each other's faces and you cannot escape this. You cannot be a pacifist in this game. Well. You can, but you better be prepared to get wailed on. So it's it's one of those style of games, you better be comfortable with it. But it's heavy, it takes a while to play, there's a lot of things to explain. But wow, you get a group, a diehard group like I have, that really enjoy this game, that can play it in a relatively short space of time. Oh, it's a good amount of fun. And if it was a bit more accessible, it would probably go a bit further up the list. But, you know, as worker placement games go, still really enjoy Argent the Consortium. I apologize more if there is some background noise out there. Everybody just seems to be, uh, despite the fact, what's the time? Uh, yes, yeah, quarter past three. You'd think most people would be at work. You know, I'm in between jobs at the moment. So, uh, you know, I don't start my next job until Monday. So I've got an excuse. What's their excuse? Anyway, hopefully it's not picking it all up. So my next one is, oh yes, uh, I love this designer. He's, he's well, yeah, I do love this designer. He's done two duds, I'll admit, in his line of work. But the rest of his games, I think, are solid Euro games. And not all of them are worker placement games. You know, they all work in different ways. But this one is a worker placement game. And granted, I had to think, does this qualify? Is there enough stuff to do? And technically, you've only got, I think, one or two workers. Or is it one worker that you put down in various spots? So I think it's more like you move and take an action. But there is a lot of blocking. You know, you can't go where someone else has gone. And you've got another neutral pawn that goes around and blocks spaces. So uh, you can take this one or leave it. If you want to call this one a cheat, maybe. But I felt this qualified a bit more than his other line of work. You are making cars, eventually. But it will take you a while. Because you need to run a car factory. Kanban. Now, yes, like I say, you might call this a slight cheat. And I can understand why. But I considered the gallerist behind me. Because I do prefer the gallerist to this game. But... With the gallerist, you have one pawn, and you're never blocked from a space. You're just helping an opponent by kicking them off it. And I thought, that removes a bit of the tension, so I didn't really fancy that. Here, though, even though you've only got, I think, is it just one worker? 
Yeah, you've just got the one worker, which is different. Yes, granted, normally you have a lot of workers, but you have to go to spots to get like blueprints for your car, to get the parts, to do the assembly line, to test the car once you've made it. And then you go to the admin office at the end of the day in order to compare objectives and score points. But it really feels like we're running a car factory, like you're an employee, dodging your boss, Sandra, who's also going to various spaces and marking you on your progress, both positively and negatively, depending on how you wanna play the game. But even though you've only got the one worker, it's still tense as all get out. There's not many spaces. I mean, you've got what, like, uh, let's see. Yeah, you've got two per location and they it takes different amount of time. It's all done in shifts. And you've only got so much time in a day that you can spend. And obviously if somebody blocks you in a particular building, so um, a particular department and the lower shift time, you've got to decide, oh, do I really want to spend extra time in there or should I go elsewhere, wait for them to skedaddle and then hope I can get in there later. It's very tense, but it is wonderfully thematic. Love this game. Granted, it really badly needs a rule book rewrite, but you know there is a geek list online and then reference aids that will explain it better. But it looks cool. It's a busy board, but it's very colorful. The main thing that sort of gets me with this one, and this was my first introduction to Vital Asserter, is that it's just wonderfully thematic. You feel exactly like an employee in a car factory with Kanban style, dodging your boss, or trying to get, you know, if she's a nice boss, then you're trying to like go, you know, look at me, my employee of the week. Or if she's a mean boss, which is the fun way to play this game. I, I like the other version fine, but I think the mean way is much more in, much more interesting. It's like, oh God, that boss, uh, skedaddle, I haven't quite got all the parts. Quick, quick, is she coming? Run. And it's, it's, it's a really cool tense scene of having to dodge Sandra. And we've all had that boss. I mean, I can't think of many bosses I've liked. One. Yeah, that's about it, yeah. I don't do well with bosses, but you know, certainly my last job wasn't great either. But, you know, so it's wonderfully thematic, wonderfully engaging, and granted, if you want to call it a cheat, maybe, but nah, I think Kanban qualifies as worker placement, and as such, deserves a place on this list. Solid, great game. My number six is, why are all my games that I want to play at that side of the room, honestly? <laughs> Oh well, exercise, as if I wasn't already tired and recovering from a cold. But, you know, this, my number six, is the preferred one in this trilogy of games that have come out for this series. The first one, uh, The Manhattan Project, was a, you know, it was a cool game. I like it. It's got some elements that I think are weak. But overall, it was a fun game. The third one that's come out, wasn't as big a fan of. It's, it's too long, it's really dry. It's a really sort of weak tug back and forth in certain elements and really didn't work as well for me. This is the best of the bunch though. This worker placement game is fantastic. Easily the best of the Manhattan Project line. Energy Empire. So good, so good. It's technically a spin-off from the range because you're not building nuclear weapons, you're running power stations and you're trying to power your various buildings and you've got different power station dice and it's, such a cool theme, it works really well, you know, it's a very thematic game as it plays out, but what makes this is the style of the worker placement itself. Because one of the big tropes is you put out a worker, then another, then another, then you get them all back, all at the same time, and then you put it out, and then you put it out, and then you get them back all at the same time. This one does away with that trope, because the way the Manhattan Project games run is that you put out workers, and even though people don't necessarily block you from going to a space, you have to pay extra power or use more workers to do so. And this includes yourself. I mean, you can go on a space once, but if you want to go there again, you need to pay extra power to do it. So you're not always blocked, but you might be. You might want to not want to spend as much power. But this is one of those games where everybody returns their workers at different times. It's not a set round. There are no rounds. You start... You carry on, end game trigger happens, and then you finish. No rounds are done. So you might, you might have the occasional reset or like an event that comes up, but that's not the same thing. With this though, I put out my workers and my opponent uh, you know, has still a couple of workers to put out and I'm like, I need to get these back and generate some more power. Okay, retrieve, roll some dice. You've got different dice for the different power stations. Roll, generate pollution if need be, and there you go. 
Somebody else might still be putting out workers though. And then as I'm putting out workers, they retrieve their workers. And when you retrieve, they're clearing up the spaces that otherwise might have been blocking you or making your life harder. So everybody places and retrieves at different times. It's fluid and it's dynamic. And that is uh, dynamic. And that is one of the things I love about this game, whether I play it solo, two player, three or four, or occasionally five. Five is a big number, but three player and four player with this works really well. And it's just a wonderful game. I never thought I would like it as much as I do. I've raved that the rule book in this is fantastic. It is so easy to learn this game. And, you know, I haven't played it for a while. Oh, yeah. 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 Good. We can teach it again. It's just one of those ones that just sticks in your head. Solid game. Easily my favorite from the Manhattan Project range. And if, any, if the only thing that's maybe lacking is maybe I would like maybe some extra buildings in there because they're kind of the same ones that you tend to see. And your starting setup powers are not the most interesting. You have slightly different resources, which is great, but that's kind of the only thing that differentiates you. And I would have kind of maybe liked some special powers and special abilities and that kind of thing. So an expansion to this maybe would up it even more, but it's still highly fun. I mean, I'm, you know, these are minor nitpicks. I still love and adore this game. It just takes worker placement and throws a bit of a twist on it whilst giving me a thematic and engaging game Energy Empire, the best of the trilogy, and I'll bet there are some people that will disagree with this. That's just fine. You know, it's that worker placement aspect that I enjoy, and all three games in the trilogy do this. I just think Energy Empire did it the best. My number five, and oh my god, I gotta go all the way over there again. I've just been there. <laughs> I really should check my list every time I do these. But, you know, I don't like to prepare the games on the big pile, though, in case I trip over it. But this is another Mind Clash game. I already mentioned to carry on, but this is my favourite that uh, Mind Clash have done to date, including the recent Cerebria, which is not a worker placement game, so that wouldn't have counted. But this one takes a theme that I thought would never be able to be done in a game right. Not even with something like Doctor Who that uses this theme all the time, you know. it. This one just took it and made it work. This is such a good theme. It is a wonderful, immersive, unique worker placement game that is not accessible to a lot of people and certainly has a lot to take in. But my God, is this one super fun. Where is it? Come here, you. This giant box that is going to break my back just trying to get it off the shelf. Come on. Here we go. Oh, we are. Here we go. Anachrony. This game is fantastic. Or, oh, if it was a bit more accessible to more, I would probably be able to rate this higher. But, oh, it's good. It's got a great solo mode with a chronobot, but I played this at Handycon. I brought it around and showed a few people it. This is one where, basically, you're playing a faction, and the faction have different starting setups and different leaders. And the idea is, is that the planet, people have learned how to time travel, or at least the corporations have. And they've looked ahead and they've seen that this meteor is going to hit the planet at some point. And, but it's like, oh, great, what do we do? You know, how do we prepare for this? Well, we're, we're not going to stop the meteor. We're just going to be the faction that rebuilds the best after it hits. And so everybody will follow our way. It's four political parties, effectively, or four way, I didn't, what's the, uh, theological ways of thinking? Is it philo philology? I don't know. But, you know, four different ways of thinking that make you want to sort of like, I think, well, they'll follow us. This is going to happen. Not going to try and stop it. Not going to warn everybody about it. But we're going to be the ones that stand up all high and proud with all our followers once it hits. Great theme. But this worker placement where you have buildings in your player board that you put your workers on, different types of workers as well, which I really like, and they power those. But in order to send them out onto the main board, you have to put them in these like mechs and you can only power up so many mechs a turn and you send them out to get resources or do research. And with the Kickstarter version and that, that I've got, I've got these like, like the mechs that you put the little worker in and it sends it out. It's purely cosmetic. You don't need them, but oh my God, do they look amazing on the table. It's such a good looking game. Oh, but the thing that really just makes me go, you know, blow my mind is the time travel aspect. It gets time travel right because you have to, you can borrow resources from the future, 
But in doing so, you cause paradoxes, which might get you negative points if you do it too often. Because at some point in the future, you have to get the resource and then pay it back to yourself in the past. And my mind has blown just trying to say the sentence. Oh my god, it's such a cool theme. But, you know, it's, it's just one of those great things about it. And, you know, granted, I just wish it was a bit more accessible to more players. That's mainly the thing that drops it slightly down the list. I can only really play this with certain people because it's a very heavy, very involved Euro. And there's a lot to remember. I have to refresh myself with the rules every time. And it takes a while. But, oh, great fun. Really enjoy this one. That is Anachrony, my well-deserved number five. And we start my number four by saying I'm a magician. Yes, I can change my clothes and everything in a heartbeat. That or the lights can stop working and suddenly I need to fix that and have to do this the next day. So uh, yeah, the art of filmmaking, I guess. Anyway, number four. Oh God, do I love this one. This one keeps going up and down. It was, it, you know, it, <clears throat> I'll get times where I'm like, yeah, you know what, I'm kind of good with it. Then I thought, oh yeah, I love it a bit. Then it goes back down and now it's consistently staying high for me. And main reason it's been brought up even more higher lately is because finally we got an expansion for it. Took you long enough, Uwe Rosenberg, seriously. And even then they had to sort of partially plagiarize a, you know, a, a fan expansion in order to do it. So it's not like entirely original content, it's stuff that's sort of an idea that's already been around and now they've made it official. But whatever, it's an expansion to one of my favorite Worker placement games ever. <clears throat> yes. Hello, lovely Caverna. Yeah, Agricola. Sorry. Uh, the. You motherfucker. You know, I don't mind Agricola, but it's far too punishing. It's too restrictive. I don't like how it gives you negative points for everything that you don't do. I don't like how it caps all the points that you can get for a certain thing, forcing you to balance, which means your farm looks like everybody else's at the end of the day. Literally, the main thing that Agricola has going for it is the occupation cards, which are unbalanced as all get out, but they're at least interesting to play with. Here, you've got the runes, and for a while, it's like, ah, oh, still much prefer this, you know, it's a, it's like point salad -y. it allows you to do what I want to do, you know, I can choose my own path, I don't get capped on the points, I could go complete munchkin sheep farmer and still get all the points. You know, great fun. The only minor negative was that you use the same buildings every game, and even though there's a lot of them, they're all available. Until this happened. Oh yes. Come on. Come out. We finally got Forgotten Folk, and this is an expansion that just, oh, it's elevated it so much. Now you've got races, you can have your own player powers, starting setups, uh, pros and cons, and even rooms that interchange some of the original ones, so not all of the original ones are in the game now. Ah, oh, so much better. But yeah, I just get a kick out of Caverna. I mean, Agricola I give respect, but it just didn't do it for me. You know, I didn't like the restrictive nature. This one isn't restrictive, so I can see why people would prefer one or the other. It's like, do you want the more restrictive, more tighter, more punishing version? You know, and some people like that in their Euros. Or do you want the more open-ended, point sanity, uh, you know, like, do what you want to do, open, open-ended type, you know, approach. Personally, I prefer this version. And so do pretty much all of the mates I've got. I think some of them like Agricola, but yeah, whenever we say, oh, can we break out Converter? Everybody's excited. Providing you play with a max of five. I mean, I literally have put the sixth and seventh player boards in my spares box in the other room because I have no intention of playing this game ever with six or seven. That is just ludicrous. But, you know, I even cranked out a solo game of this at uh, the Southampton night the other day uh, when I was waiting for people to arrive. I literally just got their copy out, just quickly went, duh, 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 finished it within like, what, 30 to 40 minutes or something, and had a good time. And I was a beer farmer and I just made all the grain and just cashed that in for gold. At the end, it was just highly entertaining. Love this game. It can only get better if they just give us more races, but to be honest, they've given us a fair few in that box, and I want the Halfling promo. I missed out on that. Oh, yeah. There are some promos I like, and why do I never seem to be able to get them? But, oh well. That aside, Caverner, my number four. Fantastic! Right, the sunlight's not been very cooperative today. Sorry about that. But uh, my number three for worker placement, yes. Now this one, oh, this constantly fights Caverna. It's like, you want the ultimate neck, neck and neck battle. It's like Caverna and this one, and it's like, which one do I like better? Which one do I like better? And it's so hard to tell which one. Previously, Caverna easily eclipsed this. 
And then an expansion came out and now they're at equal footing and it's just, I don't know, I've got one that I play with groups and I've got one that I only play with two to three players. Why do I only play it with two to three players? Because that's the only way I can play this game. Although to be honest, I tend to play it more solo than anything else. But that is fantastic. Fields of Arl. Yes, we're on a bit of a uh, Uwe Rosenberg craze here. However, spoiler alert, this will be the last one on the list. So, uh, yeah, no Feast of Odin. You know, still like the game. It's just probably by 11, 12. You know, it's not enough to make a top 10. But Fields of Arl is one of these underrated Rosenbergs. You know, most people have never heard of it, never really played it, but it's fantastic. I mean, if you like the open-ended nature of Caverna, but you wanted more options, play this one. Oh my god! The options in this game is staggering. You know, you open up all the boards and you've got, right, I can build vehicles, I can get buildings, I've got all these different tools I can use, I can upgrade these tools which give me better abilities, I can get animals, I can drain peat, I can, uh, you know, extend my dikes to the seafront, I can make grain, I can make reed, I can just do basic farming, I can uh, make leather and, and wool and, you know, linen jackets and ship stuff to other touristy areas. I mean, I cannot, the list of options you have in this game, but past the victory, is mind-blowing and yet the game itself is straightforward in the sense of how mechanically it works worker placement you have one side of the tools that you're allowed to use in like um, certain phases so you use those but you can hop to the other side of the tools because there's a summer and a winter one basically once each round so it gives you a bit of flexibility and then when you're on another round where it's in the winter time you have these actions available you can block each other just like normal worker placement but it only goes from one to two players until you throw in, I'm not going to get it, it's down there, but the Tea and Trade expansion, which I have reviewed on a previous Season 2 video, go check that out. And that elevated the game even more, because now, A, I can play it with three players, which is actually a really good fun way to play this, because you get to actually have bonus starting setups, which is really cool. But you also now have tea as a resource, and that can be done to do bonus actions, to double the value of an action, or to do other little things. You can now build ships and fishing boats and go sail off to places like Norway and England and get stuff brought back to you. Uh, oh my god, the options in this game is so good. And if there's one thing you can tell I love about Euros sometimes is the wealth of options and the thematicness of it. You know, give me, I can literally design my farm, my field of all, how I like it, entirely how I like it. And I don't feel I'm being restricted by anything other than what the other players are doing. So it's just, oh, so good. But it's a fair amount to teach in terms of all the options. And the fact that I can only play it with a max of three players doesn't help me get it to the table as much, but that's why I tend to play it solo more often. But the other thing is that, oh my god, you thought Caverna was a table hog? Woo! This was a pretty big table hog as well. You need a big table to do this, so this works fine. But uh, yeah, game night is a little bit more tricky. But honestly, I love this to bits. It's even got slightly bashed corners because I've opened it up enough. It definitely needs an insert. Sadly, it doesn't work as well with the expansion, insert-wise. You know, can we please, somebody out there, make an insert that holds this in tea and trade? That would be nice. But, you know, I don't think it's even physically possible. I think there's too many components. But, oh, yeah, love it. Love it, love it. If you like Caverna, if you're if you're into that open-ended style Euro and the farming thing appeals to you, you need to check out this game. I cannot see why you would like, like Caverna and all the rest and not this one. It's just really cool. Number two and number one could easily interchange, I think. I'm struggling to think which one of these worker placements I like more. They're just so good. And the advantage these two have over Caverna and Agric, um, Caverna and Fields of Isle, sorry, is that they're shorter. They're easier to get to the table, they're more streamlined, they still give you enough options from replay value, but they don't take hours and hours to play. And, you know, one has had an expansion in particular, but we'll get onto that one later. This was my top game of 2018. Like, seriously, this blew away the competition for games that I enjoyed last year, and rightfully so. Because I mentioned the worker placement tropes at the start, you know, the whole must feed your people and must get, you know, must get workers to do well in this game and stuff like that. You know, I mean, the Rosenbergs are classics of those tropes. And even my number one is to some degree. But this one just takes all those tropes, chucks them in the bin, and then gives you something completely fresh and innovative. You have all your workers to begin with. You put them out one by one, but the actions get better the more workers you have. But you don't block each other off spaces. But there's no rounds, so you don't get your workers back. 
Instead, you have to go fetch them yourself, or you go get other people's workers and round them up, arrest them and put them on your board, and then dump them in prison for money, and then the other players have to go get those prisoners. It's, it's really cool how they've done this. It's like such a simple inclusion, but it just completely changes the flow of the game, makes it fluid, smooth, and makes it a fresh worker placement game. If you have not played this, then seriously, get out there and play it. Oh. Garfield Games, Renegade Games, they've been bringing out Architects of the West Kingdom, and I never thought a game that's basically just based on some medieval or like, you know, old fashioned, I think it's older than medieval actually, but you know, some old feudal tile theme, you know, would grab me as much. Because theme wise, there's theme in this, even though it's fairly light, but it's also not the most interesting theme either. But oh my god, looks the business. Artwork in this, it's bright, colourful, and vibrant. It's a style that's uh, an acquired taste, but if you like the style, then the artwork in this is lovely. It looks gorgeous on the table, it pops with colour, but oh my god, Architects of the West Kingdom is just doing so well for me. I can't, I've lost count of how many times I've had to teach it in the last two to three months alone. This has gotten the plays, and it just... All the different ways that you can like play it. I mean, am I going to go for buildings? Do I go for the cathedral? You know, which apprentices do I want? You know, they give you different abilities and bonuses. Am I going to go high or low virtue? And people will think, oh, well, high virtue is the only way to win. Not true. Granted, I will accept that high virtue is probably an easier thing to grasp. You know, just stay in the good side, don't go to the black market and work on the cathedral or something. Yeah, okay, it's a relatively easy way to play. Problem is, you got a lot of competition for that cathedral because other people are thinking of it as well. But I've won this game with low virtue. And I don't just mean get low virtue and then quickly rise up the virtue at the end. No, I mean I was on minus nine points with the virtue and still won. You have to make the you have to make up for those negative points. But being at high and low virtue changed dramatically how you play. You're willing to be shadier, you're willing to let people go into prison. Does debt bother you? You know. Do you care about the cathedral? I've got a bunch of building cards and I can get resources really quick and easy. So why don't I just leave it at that? Ah, and rounding up people and dumping them in prison and getting them back. It's just so new and fresh and innovative. And that's kind of what I want in games. I'm getting sick and tired of the same stick every time. And this is one of those occasions where you've got a bloated genre. You think, oh, well, it's an... I mean, if this didn't have that, if this had all the worker placement tropes, I would have just tossed it aside and not cared because it would have just been oh look another medieval euro where you put workers out and do this you know it would have been so generic the fact that it has these like revisions and innovations going for it is what elevates this above they did a great job with raiders in the north sea not so much with the other two but i'm looking forward to paladins of the west kingdom that they're doing i mean i don't think it's work i can't remember if it's worker place i think it's something slightly different but like i say you know Last time they did Raiders, which was really good. I don't have it in my collection, but I've been meaning to grab it at some point. Uh, Raiders was really good, and Explorers and Shipwrights, not so much. I'm hoping that they don't do the same sort of thing with this. Have this be the poster child, and then the other two be pretty weak. You know, I want Paladins of the West Kingdom to be solid. As solid as this one is. If they can do that, then surefire hit for top 10 of 2019 or 20, whenever it comes out. So, Architects, highly recommended, number two barely missing out on the top spot. And finally, my number one. Yes, this barely beat out Architects because I am still thinking, oh, which one do I prefer? Which one do I prefer? One's easier, but one's got a better theme. The expansion has helped this one, and this one doesn't have an expansion yet. It's so close. But I have to give props to easily my favorite worker placement game. It's it's mid-weight level, mid level, but it still feels streamlined, doesn't feel convoluted. It's a theme I adore, you know, in real life as, a, as an interest, but also in gaming. You know, I've got a big Euro behind my head that has a similar subject matter, and it, it just seems to work. But if it didn't have the expansion, I wouldn't even put it like halfway up this list. It would be at the lower end, possibly not even making the top 10. The expansion elevated this to such a new level that it puts it in something like, it had to be like a top three expansion for me. It would just be that good. And it's been, I think, my number two and three on my top 100 a lot. I think it's probably gonna come down a bit, maybe in the next top 100, but we'll see. Here we go. 
the big one. Uh, some of it might be upside down. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the wrong way around, I know, but it's, it's viticulture with the Tuscany expansion. That is the caveat here. That Tuscany thing down there, you need that. If it was just the Essentials Edition on its own, it's still pretty good. Still recommend it, but you're missing out on certain key elements of Tuscany. So you need Tuscany Essentials with it, and like I said, it's confusing as I'll get out what the, uh, they've done with that. But basically, nowadays, get Viticulture Essentials with Tuscany Essentials. Believe me, you need both. If you've got the older versions, then as long as you've got the Tuscany with it, then you're sorted. You're not going to use everything in it, but the stuff that you do use is going to be fantastic. It is a game about making wine, funny enough. And like I say, Vinyos behind my head. Played at Handicon actually, and you know, remember just how much I like wine and how much I like winemaking. It, but this one takes it in a more streamlined fashion. You know, you get your vines, you plant them, harvest the grapes, turn them into wines of different types, and then you sell them off for money and profit. And you know, you're trying to get to a certain amount of victory points to trigger the end game. But on top of this, you choose your turn order, you have all these different, you have the seasons, so you decide, right, what am I going to do in spring? Okay, am I done with spring, right? I'm going to do summer. No, I don't really need summer, I kind of need to do stuff in the autumn, right? And then autumn comes and you start fighting for spots there. It's a really cool sort of tiered system and I don't know of any other game that does it actually. Does any other worker placement game do this? Where they have different like seasons or different times you go to spots? If not, a bit like the Pillars of the Earth one earlier, we need to have that in more games. But And then adding on the yellow and blue cards, which some people go, oh, they're on balances or get out. Yeah, okay, there's a little bit of a luck factor with them. But with the Tuscany Essentials and the extra promo packs they're bringing out, you have alternate sets of cards that have dual effects and they're more balanced. You know, use them. Don't use the original ones and you'll be all right. The orange structures, you can build two structures and they can give you alternate paths to victory. I clearly remember one game I won of this by a margin, uh, a fair margin, and I didn't even make any wine. Literally did not make any wine. I built two structures, a cafe and a restaurant that rewarded me for grapes and, oh yeah, and very basic table wine. As so I did make some basic wines. But I just basically worked on them. The whole game, I just ran a cafe and a restaurant with wine that I obviously must have bought from somewhere else or maybe I was just making in the cellar downstairs. It was such a different way to play, but it won. It was a legit strategy and it was different from everyone else. The game gives me so many memories of like coolness and this, you know, this crate is seeing a few scuff marks here and there from uh, bringing it out and sticking it in the car, but ah. Oh. I love this game. Viticulture is such a great worker placement. This is what sort of brought Stonemaier on the map for me. Because Euphoria, meh. Between two cities, meh. You know, this is the one that made me go, ooh, Stonemaier, okay, let's uh, look at you a bit closely. And then we got Scythe, which was like insanely good. And, you know, and like I say, I look forward to what they bring out. I mean, even Wingspan, I've tried that recently. And it's, it's really good. It's really good. But calm down a little bit on the hype, guys, okay? It's a, it's a really good engine builder. Looks good. But that's about it. It's you know, it's not like innovative or anything like that. It's just a decent, nice looking engine builder. Okay, so calm down. <laughs> but I re I recommend playing it. Um, but yeah, like I say, it put the publisher on the map, and I still get a kick out of it. But I must admit, Architects is fighting it. The streamlined nature of that game, the tro the fact that it throws away the tropes, because you've still got the tropes here. You know, you start off with a couple of workers, there are rounds, you have to buy more workers, otherwise you won't do well in this game. I mean, yeah, you try and win this game with two workers, I dare you. You know, so was it two workers and a grande worker? Yeah, try and win the game with just that, I dare you. Um, you know, so it's got those things, but the theme is so much more interesting than this, and the expansion just elevates it. So yeah, Tuscany, oh, gonna put that out of shot. My number one worker placement game. Now there was a lot to think about here. I mean, I I looked at uh, you know Automania, you know, really cool worker placement. I looked at Carson City. I recently got the big box version of that. Probably in my top fifteen, but just not quite enough to make the list. Feast for Odin. Like I say, people are probably like, "What? Why is that not your favorite worker placement game ever? How dare you are resign from the internet?" But it, it, it's good. I like Feast for Odin. I even played it on Monday when I got back from Portal Con, and I enjoy it. Theme is kind of lost on me with it though, when you're playing Tetris with Viking stuff. It's kind of weird. And the action spaces, as much as there's a lot of them, a lot of them are just not very good. So it kind of disregards the fact that, oh yeah, I've got 60 action spaces to choose from. 
but I only really care about 25. It's It needs an expansion to fix a few things. You know, the animal strategy is just rubbish at the moment, but I hear the Norwegian's expansion is gonna fix a lot of the stuff. It's gonna bring in new things I want. So maybe when I include that in my collection, because it is in my collection, it's on the shelf down there. I tell you no word of a lie, I still love the game. It's in my top 100, it's just at the bottom of it. But that expansion could really elevate it. So uh, I look forward to giving that one a, a detailed or an anthology review, depending. You know, I want to review that one. Uh, I said about the gallerist. Yeah, it doesn't quite fit worker placement for me. Pursuit of happiness. It lost. I, I love pursuit of happiness. But even though it's got worker placement in it, you don't block people in it. It's just how often you can go to your own space. Didn't really feel like it qualified. Ex Libri. A decent game. It's... Falling a little bit though because of the amount of text you have to describe to people on it, but you know I did consider that one because you are technically placing your workers on locations. Uh, Ray Colt, a recent one, another Uwe Rosenberg. Yes, I do like Uwe Rosenberg games for the most part, and you know that solid, love it. You know it's a it's a cool, you know lightweight farming game. You know get your greenhouses, get your cauliflower and your lettuce and that, build it up and feed the tourists. It's a really nice little simple game. Um, I wrote down Rajas of the Ganges on here. Does that dice worker play? I'm not sure that really counts. I think I was just in my thoughts with that one. Lords of Waterdeep, still love it. Still on my shelf. Just probably would be a tap 20 for me. You know, it does the job as long as you've got the expansion. That's about it, really, that I was considering. I mean, there are, there are loads of worker placement games. I probably even forgot to write down a couple here, but I'm pretty confident that these are my top 10 worker placements because I still love this genre. So, Patreon, yes, Patreon was interesting, actually. I had some uh, various, uh, you know, suggestions there. Agricola did come up, and fair enough, you know, I, I respect it. But, this is kind of weird, and I usually praise my Patreon choices, but on this occasion, you're on your own. I had more, of, uh, it was by one vote. I mean, only so many Patreons are sort of like voting on this, but by one vote, for some reason, this game was mentioned more often Kalos. Right. Don't get me wrong. It's it's okay, but this is a dated worker placement game. I mean, it's heavy, very punishing, but also just quite dull. I mean, the, the theme is non-existent. You know, you're just moving this guy on a track and building a few building tiles. That's about it. And the I mean, the cover is horrendous. That this. Thing of like the guy there is like, mm. you know, yeah, dare you to play my game, dare you to play. I'm so angry. It's like, it's like seriously, you know, a little bit of joy and happiness in your euros would not go amiss. It's, I found it okay, but I just didn't find it that memorable. It's, it's dry. It's long. It's a heavy euro. Doesn't keep me engaged that much. Maybe I'll give it another try when the second edition comes out because I know that's coming out this year. A second edition reprint of it. So maybe they'll improve the components of that, or maybe they'll just simply reprint the old-fashioned version and expect people to still like it. You know, come on, a little bit of aesthetics, guys, really? So, yeah, I mean, like I say, the Patreons have their word, they get to say it, you know, and it's it's a popular worker placement game, no doubt about it, and I can see why people like it, but it's just not for me. It wasn't one that really grabbed me, but it's understandable why it's popular with them. But I didn't expect it to come up. I mean, all these other ones? No love for Caverner? Architects? Bit of culture, you know, it's like, wham to those. Seriously, what, how did Kalos manage to get up here? No idea, but hey, Patreons have their way. This is a diplomatic relationship with Ivan but Patreons is not a dictatorship. So, you know, like I say, all well and good. So that's it for me. Whew, I'm trying to crank out these top tens lately because I want to get on to some other topics that people have suggested, but looking forward to the next one. Next one is going to be a bonus one that I've wanted to do. No one suggested this. This is one I want to do ever since the Dice Tower did it. Top 10 annoying traits in gamers. It'll be ton in cheek. I'm not out here to shame people. I'm not out here to you know, say, oh, you know, I hate this person because they're like this. These are just personality traits or tendencies from gamers when I'm playing games with them that really great me. So there's going to be a few little rants in that one. And not to say that I'm not guilty of any of them myself. There'll be times where even I fall victim to some of these tropes. But, you know, it's always like, you know, you always become the thing you hate the most. So occasionally you'll fall victim. But all in all, I'll look at these traits and go, 
oh god just come on come on why you know and it's going to be entertaining i look forward to doing that one but that's to come so that's it for me hope you've enjoyed this tap 10 sorry about the uh, change of clothes and the sunlight and maybe the noise at the start it was a uh, not the best circumstances but Hopefully this is improving. We'll see how this uh, microphone being here is doing for me. So if you prefer the audio, let me know, you know, and then I can keep this as the setup because it saves me having to have this giant boom stand next to me. And it means that the microphone isn't on the camera, which the microphone is literally here, like just out of shot. This is what, like two feet away if tops. On the camera, it's more about four or five feet away. And it makes a big difference to the quality of your audio when you have the microphone further away, you get more distortion. Anyway, I'm ravaging on too much. That's it. Signing off. Take care. Remember, regardless of which game you love for worker placement, it's still only a game. Take care and have a nice day.